So you bought a coax to ethernet adapter kit thinking that you had some coax in the room that you were wanting to add an outlet to. Unfortunately, you find that there are only telephone jacks. You could return it, but maybe that telephone jack will work. What's going on everybody, this is Paul aka Powerhouse21. A few months ago I tested the GCA6000 coax to ethernet adapter kit. That video is right here. Since then, I actually had a question that I thought I would test to get an answer. Could you use these without coax? So today I'm testing the connectivity and the speed for a 3 foot 2 wire telephone cord, 100 feet of 4 wire telephone cord, and some 18 gauge speaker wire. Here's a disclaimer, I do not know what would happen to these devices or the wiring in your house over prolonged periods of time. I'm doing this out of pure curiosity, so don't do this if you don't want to take the risk. Like I said, I have no idea what would happen if you used this for a long time. One thing I would like to say is, Comtrend, if you're watching this, would there be a way to make an RJ11 to Ethernet adapter kit like the coax? But anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the tests and the numbers. For the first test in this experiment, I ran what I feel is to be a very realistic transfer of files over a network. Land speed tests can create as many or as little fake files as you'd like to transfer. In my normal testing conditions, I set the program to create and transfer 30 files, what they call packets, that range in size from 20 kilobytes to 50 megabytes, which can be turned up to even more than that. This mimics the file transfer of something like a user folder from Windows that could have a ton of file sizes that would be all over the place. I feel this is quite a real scenario. The second test that I perform is a single 1 gig file to attempt to get a max sustained speed. For both of these tests, I would assume there would be many factors to take into consideration here, so your mileage may vary. I started with a 3 foot piece of 2 wire telephone cord clamped into a BNC to positive and negative terminal, which was then attached to a BNC to F connection coax adapter. I did find some adapters that have RJ11 connectors to BNC, and then I could still use the BNC to coax, but I found them after the items I originally ordered had already been shipped. Also, these probably aren't the most sophisticated tests that I'm conducting anyway. Maybe if I feel I need to. I'll get some of those adapters and try this all over again. But anyways, this setup was able to achieve an average read speed of 472 megabits per second and an average write speed of 168. Maximum was 547 read and 213 write, and the minimums were 200 read and 139 write in the 30 random packet test. The 1 gig file showed a maximum sustained speed of 660 write and 579 read. The second setup was the 100 feet of 4 wire telephone cable, which I ended up leaving it all spooled up like it is here, and I may have gotten some weird interference, and while I should have rolled it all out in the name of science, I honestly think the results showed it would still allow for a good amount of speed. And who knows, maybe that's a closer representation than we think, since in the walls there's probably a ton of things that cause interference anyway. The 4-wire telephone cord showed speeds of 286 megabits per second read and 135 write, a max of 327 read and 165 write, and minimums of 255 read and 108 write in the 30 random packet test. In the 1 gig file transfer, it did 336 megabits per second read as a maximum and 340 write. For the third testing scenario, I had a zip tied bunch of 6 to 8 feet of 18 gauge speaker wire that I then clamped into a 300 to 75 ohm ballon. That setup got an average of 541 megabytes per second read and 169 write, a max of 588 megabits per second read and 193 write, and minimums of 232 and 26. The 1 gig file sustained maxes of 694 write and 629 read. I have no idea if impedance had anything to do with the gigantic crater for a minimum either, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did. And I of course say that with no formal scientific background whatsoever. So here's the conclusion. And I know I have to say this in every one of these videos, 
but I have to repeat it. You don't need a 500 megabit connection to stream a movie or a TV show to a smart TV or play a game online. It just isn't necessary. These speeds are absolutely fine. So would I recommend doing this if you don't have coax in a room? I would have to test this long term to answer confidently. See what happens to the boxes. See what happens to the wiring. Who knows, this may be the next way to get wired internet around older houses that don't have anything but telephone jacks in the rooms. But I have no idea what would happen long term. But that brings me to this question. Do you have any other ideas for tests that I could put these through? Let me know in the comments below. I know my next set of tests will be on the GCA 7000 coax to ethernet adapter kit. And if you've seen that video, the other one is currently trapped inside the coax and telephone line panel in the basement. So that'll have to wait for another day. So thank you so much for joining me today while I try something that hopefully answers the question, can I use the coax to ethernet adapter kit without coax? Yes, yes you can. But if you like this type of content, go ahead and hit the thumbs up, think about subscribing, hit the little bell because there's a lot more videos in the making. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.